The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar this week. I'm sorry for the late start. We were just uh, checking some things on our end. Um, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Tanya, and I am the marketing manager over here at Struxoft Solutions. And just for those of you who are new with us today, our Star Solution MWF, or Metalwood Framer, is our Revit-based BIM framing solution that allows users to automate Revit walls, floors, ceilings, and trusses in like H steel and also in wood. So today, our technician, Marilyn, will be walking you through how to set up and run wall reports in MWF. So this includes what to run or set up before using the wall report, um, the member positioning tool, the panel positioning tool, tagged mapping labels, and wall reports. And just before we get going, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, time permitted, we will be taking a couple of live questions at the end of the webinar. In order to be selected, please press the raise hand button on the dashboard. Just please also make sure that your mic is working correctly. If you'd prefer, you can also ask questions throughout the webinar in the questions tab of the GoToWebinar dashboard. All right, that's it for me. I'm going to hand off to Marilyn now. Perfect. Thank you, Tanya. Hi, guys. Uh, so today we're going to go over how to work our uh, wall report, how to set that up. So you can see in this little image I have here, let me just temporarily hide this this section box here. You can see in this section here, I have just a section of this model I have. So to set up the wall report, we need to run some commands. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into our C drive. I'm just going to bring it on my other screen. We're going to go into our program files. We're going to go into the Structsoft Solutions folder that gets installed. You're going to go into the year that you're running. You're going to go into commands, the year again, and then MWF, because we are doing wall parts, so it has to do with the wall itself. I'm going to go into my config, and if we scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see there's called a tag mapping. So tag mapping works with our shop drawings. Uh, this is the label method when it comes to the member distribution, or if you were going to run our add member distribution that will give you a schedule label. This is the text document it's um, referencing to. Also, our wall report, we can get our wall report to read this information also. So if I do double click on it, I'm just gonna bring it onto my other screen. Again, this is the original one. If you do wanna have a unique one, uh, what you'll need to do is you'll need to duplicate, keep the same traditional name, and then all you have to do is just put dot user and then from there the software will recognize the dot user and then you pull that one instead of the traditional uh, tag mapping one so you can see i have done it in the traditional one but you can see in this case here is usually what's going to happen or what's going to look like it's going to look something like this so for my plates when i create a shop drawing using this tag mapping it's going to have a this is something that you can always change However, you do have the option to put the full name. So you can see in this, in, in this uh, example here, for my studs, this is the, the label method that we have, I have put the full name stud. Again, you can see that I have done some, for some of them, for my headers, sills, kings, jacks, for my windows, doors, and openings. However, if we just scroll down to the, the very bottom of it, you can see I have done none for these ones. So what the software does is it sees the full name and it will take the full name. However, if there isn't a full name, such as the, the bottom header for my door, it's going to take the small text. So it's going to be T in this, in this case here. So if you do want your you know, wall report or your shop drawings to read the long text or change the small text, this is where you can come in and do it. So I've already set this up. So I'm just going to hit close and I'm just going to move this on to the other side. So that is one thing that you can, you know, um, set up. So that would be the tag mapping if you want to have unique labeling method for the raw report. Now from there, what we're going to do is we're going to run the member and panel positioning. So these things need to be uh, run before we do the wall report. If we do click on the wall report, 
it will form you letting you know that these panels need to be positioned. So again, um, I want to position my whole project, so I'm not going to have anything selected. If I did only want to do maybe a couple of panels, I would need to select the, the elements of that panel and then run it. Since I don't have anything selected, we're going to go into our output slash options and we're going to read, the, uh, we're going to run the first one, the member positioning. Now, please note that the member positioning um, needs to be done before you create your shop drawings. We do give you a warning here, letting you know that uh, the, the tool itself um, will regenerate your panels. So since you're going to be regenerating your panels, uh, your, if you have already created your shop drawings, they will get removed. So this is what this um, you know, warning tells you. So this, I would suggest to do this before you do your shop drawings. Again, if you don't want this warning to sh uh, appear again, you can just un uh, have that option check and hit OK. So I'm just going to go on to bring this on my other screen. If I hit the pull down, so we, we do give you a default and this member positioning can be done for your walls and also for the floors. I've already created a new one, but all you have to do is just duplicate the, the default one. And here is the one that I have. So what do I want to compare my members to? And this is the list that we can compare it to. So what it does, it looks for the wall types, uh, sorry, the family type, the member length, the type of where the level is, the tag of it, if there's any punches, and then compares each member to that. So it gives you um, a list saying that this family type, this length, and so forth. So what I'm gonna do in this case here is, by default, it will give you a member tag. I will like to keep it just to have the member tag so that when I create the wall report, um, it's going to take that, that tag, and that tag is that mapping. So I'm gonna come over here, I have all my information because I wanna give as much detail as possible. So I'm gonna have um, this information here. Here you have a minimum of uh, digits. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it an ID. So it could be positioning um, one, two, three. Um, and how many digits do we want for that number? So by default, we do give you four. However, I did change it to two. If you want to compare it to data, you can select it and hit compare data. However, if we just keep it the default one, we will still compare it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rerun or run for the first time. Because I have already done it, this uh, dollar boxes will pop up. It's going to ask me if I want to, you know, run it again or continue. I'm going to say yes. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to, because we are positioning our members, it's taking every member you have in that project. So currently, right now, it's positioning 600, uh, six, uh, 606 members. So this process will take a little bit of time because you have to think about it as each number. It's comparing each member to the data that you have over here. So it's checking what type of family it is. Does it have any punches? Uh, what's the length? What's the level? And what's the tag? So remember, okay, so this is a unique one. So we're going to say this is one. Then it's going to the next one. And it's going to same uh, and it's just going to keep on doing it throughout your uh, members. So again, if you do have, you know, multiple panels, you need to keep in count that this process here is going to take a little bit of time because it's comparing the, the more details you put to it, the, the, the little bit more that's going to take on this one. However, you can see right now we're about 200 and so this process, you just do it uh, just in the uh, just near the end of your uh, your project because you need to have all your panels uh, modeled and you know finaled. Again, after that, uh, you what you can do is you can save it, so you don't have to you know keep doing it. Um, however, if you do regenerate your panels, that data is going to be removed. So that process has to be done again. So this is something that uh, will need to be done just before you create your shop drawings or if you do output your panels, um, this is something that can be done before that. So we're almost done, that's good. 
So you can see in some portions, this goes a little bit fast because it already has that information. So it knows, uh, it compares it and then just brings it to that list. Perfect. Okay. So what we can do is we can show the table and the show the table what it does I'm just going to bring it on to my other, uh, my other slide. It is going to give you, because we only, you know, uh, we did the um, tag map, um, member tag, sorry. It only gave us the tag um, label, uh, the member tag. So you can see here, I have my top track, I have my bottom track, and so forth. I have some, you know, bridging. So it's going to compare each of them. So you can see in this case here, this cripple here, I have a I have a quantity of six that are exactly the same. And if I keep going down, uh, so this cripple here and so forth. So this just gives you a list of the, the members that are exactly the same. So from there, I'm gonna hit close. I'm gonna save this information because I want the software to remember that information. Now from there, we're going to, again, not have anything selected. We're gonna go into our uh, options slash, sorry, our output slash options and we're going to run the panel positioning. So again, I have already duplicated one. And then from here, uh, this is the information that is given. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare this information. So I have the panel dimensions, I have the, the, the levels on, the template data, panel hosts, openings, and members. So again, I, I have changed the minimum di uh, digits. So again, default, we have four inches, uh, four, sorry. So I changed it to two. And then I'm gonna run it uh, for the first time, or in my case, I'm gonna rerun it. So I'm gonna say, okay. So okay, what's gonna do is it's just going to get all your panels and then run that information to it. So if I come over here, so currently right now in this project, I only have eight panels and these eight panels are unique. They are not the same. You can see in this case, if I did have the same panel, it's going to give me a quantity here. Uh, this is also something that you can also use when it comes to shop drawings and, 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 and whatnot. So from there, I'm gonna hit save. Now what I wanna do is I would like to create my wobble part because I have done the setup portion already. Now I'm going to do the wobble part. So again, with the wobble part, if you don't have anything selected, uh, it's just going to go through your whole project and then look for those panels. Um, or what you could do, again, just the same thing in the uh, member and panel positioning is you can have something selected and it will only create the wall report slash member report for that panel. In this case, we would like to do it for all our panels that we have in this project. So again, I'm going to go into the output slash options and hit wall report. So this dialog box will pop up. This project is currently in Imperial, you can see right here. However, I can create my wall report and member report in metric, even though that my project is in Imperial. You can do the same thing if your project's in Imperial to metric, because we do give you the option here. Now, if you do decide to change units, we do change the length uh, and the weight and so forth to reflect your uh, units. So I'm gonna go back to Imperial. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna browse to the path to where I would like it to be. Now I have already created something. So here I have uh, my folder, so it's on my desktop. Um, and then I'm going to create a member report and a wall report. You can see in this case, we do have both of them. So in this case, I am going to create my wall report. So I'm gonna double click on that folder and it's gonna ask you by default, we will give you a name. So it's gonna be wall report. However, you can come in here and you can change it to what you would like it to be. For this example, I'm just gonna keep it as is. I'm gonna hit save. Because I already have one existing, they're asking me if I wanna re uh, replace it. I'm gonna say yes. Now from here, we do have the option to change again, the units, the length units that we're using. So I'm gonna keep two feet and fractional inches. Uh, what am I rounding it to? So in this case, I'm gonna say 
one sixteenth my weight uh, and how many uh, uh, digital uh, uh, dots do I want to use? Sorry. Uh, so I'm going to go up to decimal places. I'm going to go up to two. Now from there, because I am doing my wall report, I am going to click on my wall report. And now what it's going to do is it's just going to gather all that information that we have in that project and create uh, what we what we do is we create um, an XML file and then in that XML file we'll have the information that the wall report can generate. So right now it's writing that uh, XML file. So just on my other side, I'm just going to bring it over here. It's just telling me it's already existed. Do I want to replace it? In this case, I'm going to say yes because I would like my new one. So um, this is going to pop up saying it's done. Perfect. I'm going to hit OK. And then what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to go back to uh, back to browse my folder or my path, sorry. And I'm going to select the member report. I am going to select the existing one. Again, we're going to get that same error, uh, same dollar box, sorry. I'm going to say yes in there. And for the information I have here, I'm going to keep it as is. Then I'm going to hit the member report. So now this is based off of a member. So this one's going to take a little bit of time because we do have 606 members. Um, and it's just, you know, picking that information, processing it. And then from there, it's going to do the exactly same thing that the, the, the wall report did and it's going to create the XML file. Again, because I've already on existing, this is going to pop up. So we're going to hit yes, we're going to hit done. Um, also, this is something that can be, you can see, you can move it. So if you want to do it on the other screen, that is possible. Now that we have done that portion, what we're going to do is we're going to close this. On my other side, I have the folder already opened. So you can see that I have created these, you know, around the same time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the wall report. So I'm going to double click on this. By just opening up on my other screen, I'm just going to bring it over. Perfect. I'm just going to make it a little bit again because it's an Excel uh, Excel file. I can you know do what the changes I need. Um, let's say if I like it like this. So what's going to do is the wall report will give you a list of all the panels you have in that project, and it's going to give you. Uh, it's going to give you a list of the members in that panel. So currently we are looking at panel 286. I see the first one is our top track. We can see what type of uh, profile is using, what's the reference um, level, so it's level two, and what is the size of that member. This is a really large uh, panel you can see in here because my, my top track is uh, uh, 83 uh, feet. You have the weight. Again, the weight is based off of the information that we, that we selected. And you can see in this case here, if I just scroll, we have some bracing, we have some you know, uh, openings. It's a very large panel, we can see in this case here. So if I'm just gonna keep scrolling. In this panel, I have 311 numbers. And the total weight of that panel is uh, 1,486.24. Again, you can see this one's a little bit smaller. Um, and again, we do have the same process. We have what's the length, what's the weight, what level is it referencing to, because all my panels that I currently have is on level two, uh, and then what type of member we're using and an account. So this just gives you a list of all the members you have in there. So here we only have about six, eight panels. So, so that's our, our, our member report. Uh, sorry, our wall report. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit the member report. So this is our member report. So what we give you in the member report is the profile that you're going to be using. You have the, the um, tag mapping. So if we recall, I come back over here, you have this description here in that tag mapping. So if I go to my T, uh, Top, on, uh, top track, sorry. Uh, 
oh, there it is, sorry, my apologies. You can see here we have that T and then we have the full name. Same thing over here. So this member here, I have not set it up, so that's why it's not there. Um, so I'm just gonna move it back. And you can see that this is the small text. You have the length of that member. So again, these are the really large uh, top and bottom tracks. We can see in this case here. And then here's the positioning label. So this is why it's very important to create the, uh, to run the member positioning and uh, panel positioning because this is where you can get this information here. Now with the members and the panel positioning, you can put more um, you know, data if you want to. Um, when you compare the data, uh, data, you can put that information into the list of the naming, uh, the panel name. Um, however, I just wanted to keep it you know, simple and just have this. Then it's also going to give you, you know, a quantity of how many members you have. So in this case here, I have a cripple. It is about 11 and almost 12, uh, almost one foot, sorry. And I have 290, 290 members of that same length. Uh, we have the same thing when it comes to our end studs, uh, blocking, uh, and so forth here. Here's our bridging. Again, um, these are diagonal uh, members, so it could be um, um, truss headers, uh, could be key braces, uh, and then MV braces. We have, in this case here, is we have 96. If I do bring this onto my other screen, we can see in this case, you can see my headers uh, are truss headers, and that's where the members come in. Again, we don't have a full, full text or long text because I did not set that portion up. So I'm just gonna bring this one. So today's webinar, I went over the member positioning, the panels positioning, the tag mapping, and how to run the wall report. Awesome, thank you, Marilyn. So it was a nice, short, but sweet webinar for you guys today. Um, but we would now like to open the floor to all of you. So if you'd like to pose a question live, please raise your hand now by clicking on the hand icon in the control panel. Just again, um, please make sure that your audio is working correctly. And just while we wait for any questions to come through, I'd just like to remind everyone that the recording of the presentation will be sent through tomorrow. As always, please feel free to share the recording with any colleagues. And if you're looking for it um, a little earlier in the day, you can usually find it um, at the end of the day today uh, across our social media channels. All right, I'm just gonna take a look to see if there's any questions. All right, perfect. There's one from Christopher. Christopher, I'm just gonna go ahead and unmute you. Go ahead. Hi, good morning. Does this only work in 2022? Uh, nope. Uh, so our currently right now we do support uh, 2019 to 2000. Uh, so currently right now on our on our website we have uh, 2019 to 2021. So okay. we support um, the current version and then two um, below that. Perfect. Um, so I did. I was trying to follow you in 2021, and mm -hmm. I'm getting a, unable to load positioning storage markers. Uh, so if that's if that's it, uh, I think you just need to load in your data. That could be a possibility in that case. Okay. I know I've been um, I've I've been working with Lauren and uh, Keenan um, from the UK mm -hmm. on a couple of things, but yeah, I'm just trying to watch these different webinars and see if I can pick up more on my own. Yes, uh, every every week we do have a webinar on any uh, on different things uh, in our software, so they're very good to watch. Uh, and uh, all right, thank you. No problem. All right, perfect. I'm just gonna wait to see if there's any other questions that come through. All right, well, that looks like it's a wrap for today. Um, if there are any questions after we close the session, please feel free to get in touch with us. Our contact details will be provided along with the recording tomorrow. As well as if you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one demonstration with us, um, or if you'd like to set up some training, uh, we'd be happy to get that uh, scheduled for you. All right, uh, we'll now be ending the webinar. I just wanna say a big thank you to Marilyn and also thank you to everyone who registered.
Have a great day. Thank you. Have a nice day.